Hello everyone, this is Tenor here. In this video, I would like to talk about the term called Tenor Rerun, the great selection terminology in leather industry for the tanneries. And it basically means the mix of grades they output from their factories and it changes from tannery to tannery. Since it's not very self-explanatory terminology, I would like to go in depth in detail coming from one of the recent experiences I have lived in the past few weeks as I was visiting Europe, checking some letters around uh, different dealers. And this was actually particularly from an American tannery, which is very famous. All of us love it, love their products, Horvine. Uh, most of you probably used or using their leathers. And I lived in Chicago for about eight years and I was passing by the tannery every day and it's just phenomenal that's right in the middle of the city they still create that beautiful work it's it's a historical place I've been in the tannery I visited their shop the tannery row and all that stuff and I've seen their beautiful articles um, but this time when I was visiting one of their dealers I'm not gonna uh, name the place but I was talking to this professional over there doing this business over 30 years and they're selling Horvin leathers and we were looking through some of the articles I was getting. I have in front of me uh, three of their stuff, the Chrome XL, a couple colors of the Chrome XL, and I have the Derby as well. So we'll get to it in a bit, uh, trying to see the quality selection of those. But I wanted to get a Dublin article as well. Um, I saw it on the shelf. I'm like, can I look at that too? So we opened it. And the entire role was really, really like bad selection. So, and I was like, "This is this horrible? Like, how is that possible?" And the the distributor was like, "Well, at times Horvine can come like this, you know. They're big, they're a big brand name, and sometimes their tannery run can go on the very, very lower end of things, like a lot of C's and D's." So. Sometimes they complain back to the tannery when they get a batch like that. But at that point, it's kind of too late, you know, you don't have much to do. And since their brand name is big in the small artisan space and that leather goes, if you're making smaller goods, you might get away with, you know, finding cleaning parts, cleaner parts and make your stuff. But if you're making bags, if you're in bigger article business, then that's not going to work. You know, you're, you're going to stuck with a bunch of not so clean leather. I want to explain like what is not so clean leather, what makes a leather A grade, B grade, C grade, D grade, and how the tanneries um, compile their tannery run selections. Most of the tanneries I work with, I don't get, I don't accept anything below 50, 60% A grade and then 30 B, maybe 10 or 20 C. If it's lower than that, that's that's really difficult for me to work with the tannery. But a lot of tanneries in the US, they don't have that kind of selection. They get a lot of raw hides and they don't select it much because they don't like to do corrective finishes a lot. American style tanning, it's pretty much natural finishes. Shows up everything, the pull-ups and uh, aniline's full grains. So. But some leathers are just not suitable for that. And if you don't have a B plan for leveraging those kind of leathers, then you're gonna have to use that in aniline finishes or full grains, but you don't get a good stuff at the end. You are gonna end up with a lot of C's and D's in your tenure run uh, composition, which is gonna reflect to the end user. And I don't think it's a good practice. I really like tenneries who pays huge attention to their selection processes starting from raw height. So it's not, it's like once and done kind of selection. You select the raw height when you get it. You, you get a specific kind of raw height, uh, certain limits of weight, certain gender, certain geographies of hides are suitable for some articles, especially we're talking about those transparent aniline full grain finishes you gotta be very picky about raw hide selections you're getting. Let's say you, done, you have done that right. A lot of things may have gone wrong in the year, in the climate and different things, diseases around the herd. 
and you still may get a surprise once the product gets to the half process where the hair is gone and you start seeing the grain. So usually the similar geography, similar breeds and animals produce similar qualities, but you never know until you take the hair off. So once you take the hair off at the mid process, if it's a chrome um, processing, it's wet blue. If it's vegetable tan processing, it's, it's the, the after tanning process, you make another selection. So you take your A's, you take your B's, you take your C's. And now, now you're seeing the grade. Actually, this is what you're looking at. This is not a half process item, but it's a little further down the road. This is a crust. And this is a very low grade crust. In, in my opinion, this is uh, D, maybe E. And why is that? So if we come closer to here, this is right on the neck, back of the neck of the animal, right between the shoulder blades. There is a lot of diseases and marks here. This animal has been through uh, some skin disease for sure. There's a lot of bite marks, um, like ticks and stuff. Um, if we go down lower here, right on the back, we see a lot of scratches. Probably where this animal lived was a thorny, bushy area. And the animal was scratching himself, coming over here. See a lot of scratches here, going towards the butt area. Again, a lot of disease, sickness marks. Uh, we see a, a farm branding here, the fire branded animal poor guy and you know a lot more stuff so this is one of the pretty good examples of a bad selection leather low selection so what do you do with this once you have this cde grades you know this is still material this is still needs to be um, done into something so what you do is you buff it off a little bit to get the 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 main defects off with the sanding process then you go into that uh, top grain space and probably you're going to need to apply a corrective finish on this which means you're going to need to use thicker heavier uh, coverage on your finish recipe to further cover and standardize these very uneven surfaces you see on this on this very skin even at some point you might go for embossing to either it's a hair cell which is like trying to replicate the cow hide grain with an embossing plate a huge plate this looks like the hair cells in between or you can go for a different pebbled look or crocodile or safiano you know, different kinds of embossing plates you can go with it and completely cover this with uh, acrylic and pigment finishes then this leather will become pretty pretty usable we have a lot of examples maybe I can pull this one this will turn into something like this so this is embossed with a pebble grain and it, it also had a sanding effect it still has a little bit of color variation the pull-up structure it has a burnish on it so this is what comes out of a, a leather which was below this after uh, applying some buffing and a corrective finish on it so this leather can be turned into a corrected top grain finish but the problem here is a lot of tanneries in the US and sometimes where we probably may have to do this since um, they don't have much of the corrective uh, finish articles available they use all the leather they get for the for the their traditional stuff which is <coughs> chrome excels doublins derbies and all other stuff i picked these three out of the roll that the gentleman was showing me this is the cleanest items out of the roll and we can look at this so this is a chrome excel navy from horveen this is a hand stained item so this is one defect here there is a bunch of scratches here on the neck area there is more scratches here other than that not too much defect i see on the 
the back of the animal. Overall, this is this is a pretty good one. I would say definitely A A to B grade here. And we have the other color that's very popular in their selection. It's a, a lollipop red, I think they call it, in the Chrome XL. So we can check this for some of the disease marks here. Yeah, there is a little actually knife cut in the back in the skinning process. So on the on the shoulder area I see some skin diseases. Definitely this is a lot more than the other one. Um, other one other than the navy probably this would be in in a very tight fine selection this could be B maybe even C. Since this is a darker color and a pull-up effect, we don't see much of the defects so much. But again, this is this is not an A. And which is normal. You will see A's, B's, and even C's at your tenure run. But again, it depends how much of the C you're getting versus the A's you will be getting. I would definitely ask that question when you're getting leather from tenries, especially bigger batches. Um, I would like to know how much percentage of it will be A, B, or C, or D. If they can't say a, a good number, I would be a little careful about it, if, especially if you're working with big area production, if you're making bags, upholstery, or things like that. So <clears throat> this is a derby, again from Horveen. This article will be able to take and absorb more of the lower quality B's and C's because of the double tone nature of this finish and the tumbling so the little imperfections actually makes this article look pretty okay so I would be totally fine with using B's on this finish or even C's since the scratches and little marks we can even see some examples over here there is something over here stuck on the grain there is a couple spots here which is diseases and sicknesses but they kind of enrich the rustic look of this article which doesn't bother me that much and when it comes to that other article Dublin I was looking at it was pretty similar color which shows all the defects oh my god that was all scratches the the cracked grain and I was looking at about four or five skins and they're all all of them were pretty similar like the usable area I would say 40% of the height I can use in a, in a cleaner selected cuts if I'm making crafts out of it and I was asking like what is this it's like well sometimes whole ravine might be like this and we tell them you know it's not always they they usually have a good upkeep on that selection but sometimes if they have a lot of it and they will send it and they don't do much about it afterwards why you complain Again, I think it's um, being a big brand name like that, uh, especially in the tannery space, which I admire. I congratulate them being the brand they are as a tannery. You know, tanneries are usually not the end user brands that they're known, but Horvin made a great job introducing their name from the back end of the leather industry to the end user. So that's probably that's how they can keep their business in Chicago, right in the middle of the city still run a beautiful business beautiful tannery produce amazing articles and they can get away with some of the little stuff just we mentioned here so the tannery run will basically should be a, a point that you you need to pay attention when you're dealing with tanneries in summary if you're buying big batches from tanneries directly i would ask if they are talking about tannery run great selection I would ask like what does it mean in your selection grade um, here are their percentages get your first small batch just make sure that kind of fits to your expectation especially if you're using big patterns for your products and crafts and if you don't like it then try to talk to the tannery sometimes you might even negotiate an exclusive selection sometimes I go to tannery I, I tell them I only want the A grade this particular item I'm going to use for a craft. It's big pieces. I only want A grade. Well, it's more expensive than the tannery runs or the mixed batches, but they can arrange it and depending on your need. And sometimes I tell them, hey, 
I want the E grade. I have a specific article in mind. Correct it this way, finish it this way, you know, tumble it, make it pull up double tone effect. It will blend in. Sometimes I seek for bad articles because you know I'm going for an item that, that needs to reflect that scarred character. Then you, you may not want the A grade. So depending on what you're doing and which tenor are you working with, just ask what's their um, selection distribution is. Does it fit your project in hand, the product in hand? And make a better conscious negotiation with them. Save some price, save some money on, on your purchases and end up with a better uh, end product so your customers are happier. Hopefully this helps you understand the ten tenor round concept a little bit more and gives you a little bit more confidence when you're talking to the tenories, tenory owners next time. And again, if you have any other questions or things that we didn't mention here, please send us an email, leave, us, leave a comment. We would like to answer those too and make further videos to explain things that's untouched. Thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe.